Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do another hard bait video. We're going to get into a little bit more painting here. And I'm going to show you exactly how I painted this color scheme here. I just painted this uh, maybe yesterday, maybe day before. Uh, and it's got the epoxy on this one already. But I'm going to show you exactly how to paint this. Don't be intimidated. This is an extremely beginner friendly bait. And I'm going to show you exactly how to paint it. We're going to do it in a couple different profiles. We're going to do it with the DT16, which is... Uh, kind of a spinoff of the DT series, obviously. We're going to use the 3.3 inch S crank, which is what I showed you, uh, the one that was already painted. That's what this is. And we're also going to do a 110 jerk bait. The jerk bait's going to be a little bit different pattern, but we're going to use the same colors. The stencil I have for the jerk bait is a little bit different, so just kind of hang in there with me on that. Uh, speaking of stencils, you are going to need a couple stencils for this. I have a couple here. So this is the one for the DT-16, and this is the one for the S-Crank. You can tell I've already used it, obviously. But these are the Flex Series stencils from LureBuild.com. Uh, they're not super expensive, and they're pretty much going to last forever, and it makes painting these patterns really easy, especially if you're a beginner. So I would definitely recommend these 3D Flex stencils. Uh, as far as colors go, when I look at this, obviously I'm going to put that chartreuse down first. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to use this fluorescent from Createx. There is the number on the back. It's just fluorescent yellow. Uh, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. So you're going to need that fluorescent yellow. You're going to need some opaque black, which chances are if you're painting, you probably already have the opaque black. Uh, if you're not and you're just getting into it, I would recommend that you get a big bottle uh, along with that big bottle of opaque white because you're going to use a lot of white and black. So we've already got the opaque white on these baits. I saved you the headache from having to watch that. And then the next thing we're going to be using is fluorescent orange. So we're going to be using the fluorescent orange also from Createx, and that's all we need. We're going to do that, and then we'll slap some eyes on these things. But that's uh, talk for the future. So let's go ahead and start painting. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through this first one. We're just going to slap a bunch of chartreuse on this. Really the same process as the white. We're going to coat the entire bait. Uh, with this chartreuse, I like to do, uh, or fluorescent yellow, I should say, I like to do one coat, heat set it, and then do another coat. I have my airbrush set with pretty open nozzle here because I'm trying to lay down a lot of paint. I'm trying to get good coverage, uh, and I don't want when I heat set it for there to be uh, any light spots. So realistically, I'm just going to go down the top of this bait, and we're just going to put some chartreuse on the top of this all down the sides and we're just going to keep going until we get it all the way covered pretty easy stuff here not a whole lot of precision needed to do something like this which is always nice because you can just kind of blaze through it okay that is basically what you're going for that is one coat um, I went ahead and put two coats on this, and this one is dry, so you can see the texture difference and a little bit of brightness difference. This one is just a little bit brighter, so that two coats with the fluorescent yellow uh, over that opaque white seems to be uh, about the right number there. Okay, so we went ahead and put some heat on this. Now you can tell it's got a matte finish. That's how you can tell a lot of these Createx paints are dry. Uh, I just used a heat gun on low settings. You can also use a hair dryer, but just make that finish go matte and then go ahead and spray that second coat on over the top of that. Okay, now that we have all of our baits to this chartreuse color, there is our DT, there is our jerk bait, and here is our S-crank. So all the same process, we just covered them completely in that chartreuse, two coats of that. Now we have our fluorescent orange loaded up here in the gun. I backed my pressure down a little bit just because it's easier to control. Uh, if you're trying to do a little bit more finesse work, for me, it's easier if I back that air pressure down because when I coat the whole bait, I run it at a higher pressure, uh, but I don't necessarily need to do that uh, when I am coating the bait uh, in detail. So now that we've got this loaded up, I've backed this down. We're just going to start here on the belly, and we're just going to make a little bit of a circle around this first hook hanger. Uh, and kind of fade it up into these gills a little bit, and we're just going to see how it goes. Okay, let's take this and just start here on the belly, and we're just going to start with a line, getting a feel for our airbrush, making sure it's shooting how we want it. 
And then I'm going to go right around that gill plate there. Kind of up around that hook hanger. Approach that pretty easily. Same thing here. We'll just go in some lines. Not getting too fancy with it. And this is also probably going to be a two coat job here. I might even fade it up the side a little bit here. I haven't done this pattern on a DT yet. And this is a big DT, so probably just bring it up there a little bit higher. I want to make sure you can see it from the side profile. And then we'll just kind of copy what we did here. Okay. That's a pretty good first coat. We just want to try to get any of the light spots out of it. Uh, and then we'll heat set it. But that is a pretty good first coat. You can kind of see what I did. I just went around the gill plate there. And then I bring it up. And I'm going to make this a little more curved probably. Where it just kind of tapers off after this hook hanger. So this is it after two coats. It's plenty bright. It's not as bright on the camera as it is in real life. It's pretty bright here. Uh, two coats, heat set in between. I just went over any light spots that were in there, and that is perfectly fine with me. So I'm going to go ahead and do these other ones, uh, and then we'll move on to doing the black. So here is a look at how I did the orange on the other two, in case you are following along to paint the S-crank. That's how I did it on the S-crank there, and this is how I did it on the jerk bait. Just putting a little bit of orange on the nose, just kind of do it however you want it. I like to bring it up the side a little bit just so that you can see it from the side and not just from underneath, but that is exactly how we're going about doing it. So at this point, we have the chartreuse and the orange on the baits. This is a great time, if you're going to do it, to put the UVLS clear on the bait. There's two reasons for doing this. One, it gives UV protection, uh, and two, it also will protect your bait if you use it as a mid-coat like this for when we're using our stencils. So it doesn't take a lot of force to get water-based paint to come off of your blanks. So this is a really good time to thin some of that down, run it through your airbrush, uh, and then let it dry before we put the stencil on it because you can scratch it. If you're not going to do it, though, just be very careful. Just keep in mind that it does not take much to scratch one of these baits up, uh, and that could save you some headache in the future. But I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff lined out, get ready to do the black, and then I'll come back when we're ready to put that pattern on. Okay, so the way I like to do this, I've tried it a couple different ways. I like to just take a rag, fold it a few times to where I get a little bit of height, and then I like to turn that lure away from me, and then set this down on top of it, and then I check it with the tail, make sure it's nice and tight up against the tail section here, and then just paint down the back of this. I've already got my airbrush tuned in pretty good, so we're going to see if I can zoom you in, and maybe we can... Get a close look at this. Okay, once I feel like I've got my stencil here pretty close, we're just going to start spraying. We're going to go down each of these channels here and just make sure we get them nice and full because if you take the stencil off, it can be a little tricky to get it lined up exactly if you have to go back uh, and try to fill in a light spot. So it's best if you can do it on the first try. So just make sure, take your time, and fill in all those pieces of this stencil. Because some of them have a lot of little holes, and they can be a little bit tricky to make sure you get them all filled in. But if you have your airbrush set right and you're atomizing good, you shouldn't have to really worry about runs or anything like that underneath the stencil, as long as you're being halfway reasonable with the paint. But that is that. So now... You can see that we have all this filled in. I'm just going to take this stencil and pull it apart slightly and pop it off. Now you can see we've got that black on the bait. Uh, we'll do the other side after I heat set this, and then we'll do a strip of black down the top and kind of fade it into that eye. Make sure it goes to the matte finish, just like it's supposed to. Looking pretty good. All right. Now that we have that done, we'll go ahead and put some black down the back, and I'll show you that real quick. We'll just go nice and easy, 
And how far you fade down the sides is completely up to you. Uh, you just want it to make sure that it's blending in to where that stencil meets. And then some guys like to do black around the eye. That's completely up to you. Uh, I do it on a lot of my baits because I feel like it ties the eye in better. But that's the fun part about this. You can just experiment uh, and do exactly what you want. I'm going to do a little bit of black here on the nose like so and then I may fade it just a hair like that and then we'll see I may end up putting black on the eye sockets I don't know that I love that but we're gonna go down the side just a hair okay so Sorry, I bumped you guys. Now we'll heat set this. Give it a little heat set real quick. And there you go. That is pretty much it. That's exactly uh, how I painted these. And then we'll show you uh, how to do this on the S-Crank too. It's exactly the same process, but I will do one. And then the jerk bait I'll show too, because it's a little bit different stencil that I'm going to use. But that is pretty much what we're working with on that paint scheme. So the S-Crank is the exact same way. We actually have the identical stencil just made for the S-Crank. So it's going to be the exact same process. The only thing with the S-Crank is I like to make sure the tail is hanging off or the back section is hanging off of my rag. That way I can really push that stencil uh, down on that bait because it seems like every once in a while I'll get one that tries to move on me. So that's my advice on that. Just make sure that tail section uh, is kind of hanging off of there. That way you can get the stencil really down on there the best you can. Same thing, just a lot smaller of a profile. These are awesome stencils though. I've used them quite a while now uh, and I am a big fan of these stencils. It makes me not have to be a pro uh, and I love that. <laughs> Because what I want with these videos is I want easy patterns to paint for people who are beginners or just want something simple. I don't want to get crazy complicated with it. I'm not trying to paint a $300 glide bait. I'm just trying to paint stuff that I have fun with. Uh, and that is kind of the whole purpose of me even doing this kind of stuff is because I enjoy it. And I don't want to ruin the enjoyment factor of it. You give this a little heat set. This one's probably going to go in my tackle box, which is perfectly fine with me. I wanted one of these anyways. We're just going to run a little bit of black down the top here. And then a little bit on the nose. A little bit on the nose there. Then I'm going to paint just the top of that eye socket there. Like so, maybe fade that in just a hair. Okay. Now we'll heat set it. Make sure none of our paint's going anywhere. All right. So that is the S crank there next to uh, the DT. So you can really see the size difference there. But yeah, that is the first two. Okay, so now that we have this stencil on our bait, we're going to see about getting it a way that I like to do it. I'm going to flip it upside down. I usually like to do these from upside down. So now we're just going to do the same thing we did on the other stencils. I'm going to start at the back. Make sure I fill all these in. Because it looks kind of funny if you don't fill them in all the way. And it's very easy to do. Kind of leaves like a foggy look on the pattern very easy to do I want to say a lot of these stencils are about 18 bucks but it's kind of nice having one that's actually designed for the bait you're painting with that there is a little bit of drawback obviously you're not going to be able to use it probably on any other bait so it's kind of a uh, win and lose situation there versus like universal stencils but it does fit on the bait quite nice okay there is the pattern that is on the jerk bait now 
We'll uh, heat set this, flip it over to the other side, and then I'll show going down the back. Well, I almost forgot to record going down the back. As you can see, I already got started on it, but that's not a big deal. I'll at least show you finishing it up. I hadn't got too far. Okay, we'll just work our way down. Put a little black down that. I'm probably going to do just a little bit of black down the sides. Kind of fade that in. See if I can. Okay. So that is kind of what we're going for. I'm going to do a little black here uh, on the nose. And I'll get underneath here in just a second. But yeah, that is what we're going for. And I will show you after we put spies on it. So that is the final product there. There it is on the DT. Amazing looking pattern, and as you saw, that's not a hard pattern to replicate. I think that's something you guys are going to like, and you're welcome to use it. This is the S-Crank here, same exact pattern uh, that I showed you in the beginning of the video, just another one, uh, and then we went ahead and did a little jerk bait. This is different than the one I did the other day. I think I might like the one the other day just a little bit more, but that's still going to catch fish. Uh, and that'll probably go in my box. If you're wanting some of these baits, I'm not going to have very many of them. Uh, like I said, I don't do this just a ton. But I'm going to have probably a couple of S-Cranks available. Uh, I may sell one of those DTs. I don't know. I'm going to keep one for myself. Uh, this was kind of more just to show you how to paint this pattern uh, and to uh, fill my box up a little bit. Because believe it or not, I do a lot of bait making, but I don't keep a lot of stuff for myself for the most part unless it's something uh, that I know I'm planning to fish with just uh, within a few days so I've kind of I've kind of gifted out most of the stuff that I've bought just for testing purposes to make sure that everything was going to hold up good and we've had some awesome catches uh, on some baits that I've given out I fished a tournament on Sunday and our first keeper came off of one of my jerk baits believe it or not so that was pretty awesome uh, so that's just kind of what we've been getting into I hope you guys did enjoy this painting video uh, if you want to pick up any awesome parts, I'll leave a link to LureBuild.com. It's not sponsored, but I just buy all my stuff there because it's really easy. Uh, their hooks are good. They have good blanks. Uh, they have great stencils, things of that nature. So I just order all my stuff from there. Uh, not sponsored, like I said, but uh, it is a good place to buy things. So if you want to stick around and watch some more stuff, like and subscribe. It does help the channel out. Uh, and until next time, I will catch you guys in the next video.